In this video, we want to use similar triangles to find the value of x. Two triangles are similar if they have the same shape and the corresponding angles have the same measure. Along with that, corresponding sides are proportional. So you can pause the video and see if you can do this. Otherwise, I'll continue. First, let's show that the two triangles are similar. So in the diagram, we actually have one large triangle. That side would be this one here, this side here, and then this side here. And you can see there's a right angle there for that one. And then over here. And then on the small triangle, that would be this one here. Moving up, all the way around. This is a smaller triangle. You can see there's a right angle there also. So you can see that the, the two triangles then have one angle corresponding to them that has the same measure. You can also notice that they share an angle. This angle right here is common to both. So two of the angles corresponding to the triangles are equal, obviously, because the angles add up to 180. The third also has to be uh, congruent to the corresponding one. But all you have to do is show that two corresponding angles are have the same measure. That's angle-angle. So it's clear that these are similar. Notice again that for the small triangle, the base side here is 4. And for the large triangle, it's broken up into two parts. So it's 4 and 6. That would be 10. So now, to set up the proportion to solve for x, you take a side of either triangle. So I'm going to take the side of the larger triangle here, the one labeled x, because that's what we're looking for. So according to the proportion then, to, if, two, if two triangles are similar, corresponding parts are proportional. So that means if I take x over the corresponding part of the small triangle, that would be 5. That should equal to another side of the large triangle. Of course, you want to pick the side that you're given. So 4 and 6 is 10. So the base side of the larger triangle is 10. So this should be 10 over. Corresponding side of the small triangle is 4. And then you have it. So this would be x over 5. You don't have to do this, but you can go ahead and reduce it. 10 over 4 reduces to divide by 2. 2 divides into 10, 5. 2 divides into 4 twice. And multiply through by 5. Multiplying this by 5. And over here by 5. 5 cancel over here. So I get x is equal to 25 over 2. And if you want a decimal approximation to this, or in this case it will be exact because 2 into 25 goes 12 and a half or 12.5. So the missing part, or in this case the missing side, would be 12.5. And this will be units. The units are not given. Now I want to point out to you also that you could also do this. I can look at the, the small triangle and say, okay, this side is 5 and this side is 4. So I'm going to say, well, I'm going to take 5 over 4. And if you set up that same that same ratio with the large triangle, as long as you pick the corresponding sides in the in, in that order, so whatever's in the numerator has to correspond to what's in the numerator on the other one. So let's see, you got five first over here, and the base and the bottom. So I have to do the same thing with the right triangle, or the large triangle. So okay, x will correspond to five. So this would be x, and then the base of the large triangle corresponds to 10. So I get 5 over 4 is equal to x over 10. Looks a little bit different, but if you multiply by 10 here, these cancel out. And here you get 5 times 10 is 50 over 4. You can reduce that by, by 2 you get 25 over 2, which is the same thing we got over here. So you get, get the same answer. It comes out to 25 over 2 or 
12.5. Now that, that's pretty much it for this particular problem. But I do want to point out though, that sometimes uh, when you're, especially when you're working with, with right triangles, besides using the ideas of similar triangles, uh, sometimes it's going to be helpful to know or use the Pythagorean theorem. It says if you have a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is always equal to the sum of the squares of the su of the sides of the uh, triangle or the legs. So notice, let's suppose you were just given the small triangle and it's a right triangle. You're given one side to be 5, another side to be 4, and you want the length of the hypotenuse right here. From this point to this point over here. Well, according to this formula, and like I said, sometimes you'll be using uh, different formulas besides the ideas from similar triangles. A lot of times it'll be the Pythagorean theorem, so c squared should equal to, let's say you can uh, look at this, either one doesn't matter which one you pick is a or b. But it's going to be the square of 4, 16, plus the square of 5 is 25. So c squared is equal to 41. So if you wanted the value of c, or the length of the hypotenuse, you take the square root of that, square root of both sides, square root of c squared is c then the square root of 41. Since it doesn't have an exact root, we could leave it like that. Or you could use your calculator to compute the square root of 41. But that's the uh, solution to the problem. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.